Now, once you've created your design inside Figma, you're going to need to have a record of the fonts, the typography, the settings, the colors, and so on. This is where a style guide comes in super handy, whether you're handing this off to a designer and developer, or if you're actually just having a record for yourself when you go ahead and create things, or you may want to pass this off to the client themselves. All we need to do is make sure we've got a little bit of housekeeping, a little bit of groundwork done before we start out. What am I talking about? Well, we need to have our fonts and our typography and our colors all set up as styles inside Figma. Now to do that is really easy and you should do this anyway for good practice. It just means the whole process is so much more streamlined. Let's go ahead and just create a little block of text. So we'll press T to start the type tool and we'll simply go ahead, drag a box out and we'll insert some text. Let's change a few parameters for this. So we'll select the text, we'll come over, let's change the typography. Make this regular, we'll change the size, we'll set this to something like 24. We'll adjust the actual line height and paragraph spacing and those kinds of things. So tighten our letter spacing up a little bit, adjust a few parameters. And if we want to change the font as well. So let's just change this to something like Barlow. So now we've got our font, our typography all ready to go. With it selected, all we need to do is come over to the text panel on the right hand side, which is underneath design if you don't see it. And then we're going to click on these four dots. This is the style options. This will open up the styles panel. Now you can see I've already created a couple of text styles. And all I need to do is click on the plus to create a new one. Let's give this a name. If you want to drop in a description, you can do that underneath. And you can also show more options. This allows you to see all the options we've just set up, things like line spacing, letter spacing, paragraph spacing, all those kinds of things. So if you wanted to tweak it inside you, you could do that prior to doing anything with the style. If you click on the three dots, you can see that also gives us more information about the type details itself. So it tells us what typography, what font we're using, any decoration, all those kinds of things, case and everything like that. We'll leave everything as it is though. We'll say we're happy with this and we'll say create style. We've now created a new style. So if we open the options up, you can see inside there, we've got our styles included, our new style. And also when we've got this text selected and come over, you'll see that we've got this little chain icon that's broken. This is telling us that we can, if we want to, detach this text from that style. For this example, we don't need to worry about that. So we set our text up. Now the same thing works basically when it comes to colors. So for example, let's go ahead and use the rectangle tool. Let's draw, draw a shape out. And for this example, we'll go ahead and change our color to something else. Let's just choose something like a nice pale blue. This'll do. You can see we've got the same options. We can click on the four dots, which is the style panel. Open that up and you can see there's our global styles. Let's go ahead and click on plus. We'll give this a name. Again, if we want to give it a description, we can. And again, we have more options underneath. So if you want to adjust the properties, those kinds of things, you can do that inside here. Again, let's go ahead and click on create style. We now have our style. Again, we have the little chain link so we can disconnect that or detach that from our global styling. However, in this example, that's perfectly fine. And now if we do something like create a new rectangle, we'll draw that out. We can come over, click on our four dots. And from there, we can choose our global color, our color style. There's our blue, boom, job done. Want to change that? We can just dip, get rid of it, click the four dots and change it for one of our other colors. Simple as that. So now we've seen exactly how to set these up. Let's delete those from there. Let's get rid of these from here as well. So we can click on this blue color, for example, and I can just delete that. And I can do exactly the same thing for my text. So there's our sample text. I can select it. I can delete it. Job done. So we've got rid of those. So that's how easy it is to set up these global colors and global typography settings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a free plugin. So let's just zoom out. We've set everything up. So we're going to come to our plugins. And inside there, we're going to choose automatic style guides. Now, there's more than just one option here, but I like this one because this creates a separate document with the colors and the typography all set up with examples and everything we need. So we're going to click on the option to run. And inside there, we've got three different options. For this, we're just going to just go ahead and say generate a style guide. That tells us now that any errors, anything it needs to know, it tells us, gives a little pop-up warning. And once it's finished, it creates a new page for us called Style Guide. If we click to open that up, we now have a full style guide that has all of the information. You can see this is all styled up. If we want to change any of this, we can do. So we can customize this to what we want. There's our colors, with our hex values and so on. So you can see if we open this up, it tells us the name of the color, the RGB, HSL, and the hexadecimal values. We scroll down, there's our typographic styles. So there's our body, it tells us the font, the weight, all those kinds of things. The same for our subheadings, same for our hero and any other one. So you can see anywhere any of this has changed, things like line height, the weight, 
the letter spacing and so on. All of that information is stored inside this document. And then you can output this as a PDF if you want to, whatever format you want, or just keep it alongside your design. So you've got this very quick reference to just jump into whenever you need it. That's how easy it is to create your first style guide using Figma and a free plugin with a bunch of really cool options. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this on Figma and design tools like Figma, let me know in the comment section. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.